Okay, so now that we've gone over SN2 reactions, now I'm going to cover SN1 reactions. And personally, I think these are a lot more fun to draw than SN2. So um, anyway, because it has a few more steps. So here we go. SN1, um, of course, again, SN for nucleophilic substitution. And then, um, you know, SN2, the reason why I had the number two on there was because both species, both the uh, joining group and the leaving group were both responsible for the rate determining step of the reaction. In this case, only one part is going to be responsible for the rate determining step of the reaction, and so that's why it's SN1. Now, uh, interestingly enough, um, how SN2 happens all at once, it's basically just like one line, it all happens at the same time. In SN1 reactions, uh, we're going to have three separate steps. So just remember that when you're doing it, it's going to have three steps. So I'm going to go ahead and start by using tert butyl bromide. And just because last time I was using uh, methyl bromide. And so um, this is a, a good molecule to use to show SN1. So of course, let me just, uh, if you remember, methyl bromide um, is like this. That was methyl bromide, and then uh, tert butyl bromide uh, has the same structure, except all these hydrogens are going to be methyl groups instead. So uh, tert butyl bromide is going to look like this. Okay, so that's what uh, the tert butyl bromide is going to look like. So basically what happens in an SN1 reaction is that we're always going to form a carbocation. And what that is, is basically when electrons leave from a carbon, leaving the carbon with a slightly positive charge. So this bromine here has those electrons there. So the first step, and this is actually the rate limiting step, this is the, the step that takes the most time, is for the electrons that are here at this carbon to actually leave and join that bromine there. So then we're going to have and this is going to have positive charge on it. So because those electrons left from this bond formation here and went to the, the bromine, which is now a bromide, so then we have, and just like before, uh, now the bromine is going to have all these electrons and it's going to be negatively charged. And like I mentioned, this is step number one, and this is the rate determining step. Okay, so this is the rate determining step and it is a slow one. Okay, so now we've formed a carbocation and the bromide. So what this is, it's important to note that this particular carbocation that we have here, you can see that this carbon is attached to three other carbons. That's gonna make it a tertiary carbocation, tertiary. It's a tertiary carbocation like I said, because it's this carbon is literally attached to three other carbons. That's important because tertiary carbocations are the most stable um, and the most favorable. So if uh, a molecule is going to tend to want to do several things, either form tertiary carbocations or rearrange itself in order to, if it can, form a tertiary carbocation. Like, for example, if you had a situation where you had a primary or a secondary, but the molecule could rearrange itself to turn it into a tertiary carbocation, it would do that. And I'm going to get into that in the next in the next video where I'm going to discuss um, rearrangements of molecules for SN1 reactions. Now, this rearrangement, like I said, only happens in SN1 reactions. So in this particular case, like I said, we have a tertiary carbocation. 
So, and that is the most stable. So now what's gonna happen is we have these intermediates and we're gonna have a nucleophilic attack on this tertiary carbocation. So what would that look like? So now we're going to say that, um, of course, this uh, butyl bromide is going to be in some sort of solution, um, solvent. So it could be an alcohol or it could be water. And for our purposes here, I'm gonna use methanol as a solvent, just as an example, but um, it could also be water. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw step number two over here. And we're gonna have the, the, the butyl bromide again with the carbocation. Okay, and this is positively charged because it's lost an electron. The carbon gave its electron to the bromine and so now there's a positive charge there. And like I said, for our purposes, we're going to say that we have methanol. And so methanol is gonna look like this. Okay, so now this is a nucleophile and it's going to go ahead and attack that positive charge. So we're gonna draw an, elect uh, an arrow and make sure that you, you know, put the tail of the arrow on the electron and you're drawing exactly where you want it to go. <clears throat> That's going to attack there. And then we get And then of course, um, this oxygen here, it had two lone pairs, and then one of those went to contribute to making the bond with this carbon. Uh, so now we're only gonna have one lone pair left. And now since it's given that away, now this oxygen is gonna have a slightly positive charge. So I'm gonna do that plus sign right there. So, and this step actually happens pretty quickly. This is a fast step. So this is not rate determining for the reaction in any way. Like I said, and since only this part of the reaction is, is responsible for the rate of the reaction, because it is a slow one, that's why it's an SN1 reaction. Only one step is responsible for, for determining the rate. So this is fast. Okay. So now what's gonna happen is this is basically the product, but what's gonna to have to happen here because this oxygen now has a, has a positive charge on it, we're going to have to deprotonate it. So we already have methanol at our disposal. So, and of course, this is all happening within the same you know, solvent. So you have a beaker full of this stuff, you know, so you have lots of these to use. So that's gonna take part in the next step of the reaction as well. Again, we have our and then we have another um, methanol molecule. And now what's going to happen is that the electrons on this methanol are going to attack the hydrogen in order to deprotonate this. And then the, the bond here is going to break and it's going to give these electrons to the oxygen. So we remove that uh, positive charge there. Now we get we get that, and uh, basically what we've formed here 
is, oh, and actually, you know, if you wanted to draw the leftover of that, we would have with a slightly positive charge. So, and what we've formed here basically is, this will, This is an ether, the gist of the SN1 reaction, um, it's, it always is going to have three steps. The formation of the carbocation is first, and then you're going to have the nucleophilic attack second, and then the deprotonation is the last step, and this is also happens fast. So, and that's it. That's the SN1 reaction.